I am going to be uh, talking about Quasar, a high performance time series database. Um, I am Michael Anderson. I'm, I work with, in software defined buildings, advised by Professor Culler. Um, what is Quasar? So essentially, Quasar is a database that offers something that existing time series databases don't. Firstly, much higher performance and scalability. Secondly, a fixed response time for any query interval. Uh, five months, five minutes, doesn't matter, we can get you back an answer. And thirdly, it provides a bunch of essential features that we needed for the complex anal analysis we were doing. So firstly, let me back up the need to uh, invent something new. Existing time series databases, the most popular things like OpenTSDB, are sitting at around 4,000 inserts per second on, the, on their published benchmarks. Um, another database, ReadingDB, invented at Berkeley, is sitting at around 38,000 inserts per second. This is normally okay for things like building temperature data, but it wasn't enough for our needs. Even key values uh, databases, which don't offer time series features, are only sitting at around 2 million ins per second, like Tokyo Cabinet, one of the faster ones. So we even in addition to this, we have problems where there's insufficient precision uh, on these databases. 32-bit timestamps were not enough for our needs. And as I said again, we're missing the core features we needed for our complex anal analytics. So what motivated the need to uh, design a new database? The Microsynchrophases for Distribution Systems project has given us a bunch of these devices that we're deploying around the states in distribution systems that measure power data. And they output extremely uh, precise and very dense data at 1.4 kilosamples per second per device. And at the start of the project, they came up to us and said, well, we're probably going to deploy about 100 of these. Uh, so that's 12 streams per device, 100 devices, and probably 5 to 10 times amplification on distillates and analysis on that data. So what we needed was a minimum of 1.4 million inserts per second, uh, which, is, which is something that we couldn't get out of even an ensemble of existing technology. And obviously more would be ideal, and this is going to be a project running for a while, so the storage has to be efficient as well. So what we ended up getting to was a database that can provide 7.3 million readings per second, uh, uh, inserts per second, with a read throughput of 5.5 million. And, and in addition, if you're running in a high availability with failover, it drops a little bit, but we're still above our target at 3.3 million inserts per second. And in terms of storage efficiency, we managed to get it down to 5.4 bytes per reading. It's a third of what the raw size was. And as you'll see later, we store a bunch of statistical information to meet our other goals. So this is including all of the overhead that the database has to achieve its other objectives. Then in terms of uh, visualization, what we had this need in this project where we've got this data where you can zoom right into an individual second and see 120 readings, but you, can, you need to zoom back out and see trends over five months as well. Uh, and working with this kind of high density data is, is just tricky. We, we couldn't find any visualization platforms that could work. So we, when we developed one, what we needed was the ability to say, a screen has 1,000 pixels. I need 1,000 statistical points of my data over any window. And I need it fast enough that the visualization is responsive. So what we ended up designing was the ability to query any interval and get back a statistical representation of that interval in a fixed time. And then in terms of the complex analytics, we needed additional features. Our streams are distilled and combined to create um, additional streams which are either observed by humans or feed into future algorithms. And these algorithms are computationally intensive. Some examples might simply be the difference in voltage between two points. Um, it might be phase differences. So changing phase over time will give you frequency. Um, and when you calculate these, it's actually, it was it's existing models use streaming through a set of uh, instead of analysis engines, which is not really that stable. And there were a bunch of other methods, but nothing really satisfactorily solved this problem. We thought we could take a different angle on it. Because times are changing. You can now get extremely high performance bulk storage um, for almost nothing. So the angle we took was if you can pre-compute these distillates that you're going to want to visualize later and put them on an SSD, you get bounded latency. It's really hard to do this in production. Why? Because your results have to be correct and when, even though you have multiple servers, you need to guarantee that whatever changes on your inputs are going to percolate through to the output. Servers may crash. Researchers may rewrite algorithms and deploy them on production without any warning to the developers. Um, but you still need to make sure that all the data trickles through. We achieve this by creating this virtual data structure with the K tree where any write trickles through. It's a copy on write tree. And I can now, using this data structure, determine what has changed between any two generations of the tree. It allows me to now say, irrespective of any server restarts, any, any failovers, or any faults, I can say exactly which ranges need to be pre-computed to give me a consistent range. So I get eventual consistency um, in the face of failures. 
And I can also go back and view the database as it was at any point in time, which gives me um, the ability to, to reproduce my, my research. So in the end, we basically pr produced a time series database with 3,500 times the performance of the generally used one and 350 times the performance of the best in class. We get fixed response times, and we get a version storage with diffs between any two uh, commits in, in the database. Thank you. I encourage you to come to Fourth Floor Soda and come see a live demo. It's really quite fun.